Let's talk about multi-parameter effects. Multi-parameter effects are exactly what they sound like, effects that happen to uh, work on multiple different parameters simultaneously. And we can do them in all three types of effects, step-based, absolute, and linear. Although I find absolute to be uh, the most versatile of the three for, for doing multi-parameter effects. But let's start, with, uh, let's start with taking a look at linear effects, and then we'll move into absolute effects after that. So to create a new effect, we can open our effect editor, and I'm going to create effect H12, and I'm going to make it a linear effect. We have our graph here, and we start with intensity over time. I want to make an effect that the light tilts up and zooms out, tilts up and zooms out. That's the effect I am trying to create. First thing, I know that that would be a ramp, because I want it to increase in value, both in tilt value and in zoom value. So I'm going to select my ramp shape, and I'm going to move it and squeeze it down so that it's just an above the line effect. This works well as an above the line effect because we want it to go from wherever this light currently is, only tilting in one direction. We don't want it to tilt backwards. If this was an above and a below the line effect, this light would tilt down and tilt up um, using the scale in both directions. I'm going to click apply. Right now it's still intensity over time. I'm going to change my parameter just to tilt. So right now I, this is tilt over time. So as this effect moves forward in time, the fixture is going to tilt up. How much? Well, it's going to tilt up by our scale, which is here 25. Right now, let's take a look in live and see how this looks. I'm going to take our front movers in full, and I'm going to apply that effect. And we can sure enough see they're doing it. It's not very dramatic, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to increase our scale to 50%. I'm actually going to tilt them up on stage a little bit so we can see a little bit more of the effect. But yep, sure enough, it's doing this tilt. It's fading up, and then it's snapping back down in as close to zero timing as it can do. We now want to add the zoom into this. So I'm going to go back into my effects editor, and I'm going to tap on tilt and zoom, because I want this to affect both of those. Even though it only says one parameter, it says tilt over time here in the graph, um, my parameter tiles here are telling me a different story, and they're saying that it is indeed going to apply to both tilt and zoom. So I'm going to go back into live. We still have this effect running, and it's only running on tilt right now, because previous to this, it didn't have zoom as one of its parameters. So I'm going to stop that effect, and I'm just going to reapply it. Let's say my front movers, run that effect, and now you can see it's slowly tilting up and zooming out, and then it's snapping both parameters back to zero. So this is fine, this is great uh, maybe for busking stuff, this is great, but the level, unfortunately the level of precision I can achieve with this is, is relatively minimal because I can't, in a, in a single linear effect, I cannot separate out these two graphs working on these two parameters. Uh, to do that, I would need to use two separate linear effects and then maybe I could roll them together in a preset or something like that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this effect. So we're going to talk about how to be a little more precise using absolute effects. But before we move on, one other thing I wanted to talk about, there is a bit of a gotcha in here, whereas you cannot have intensity operate as one of your multiple parameters. The moment we put intensity in an effect, even though we see intensity and tilt show up here in the parameters tile, if we run that effect, We run that effect, it's only going to run on the intensity parameter. It is showing that effect as showing up on tilt, but it's only going to run on intensity. And it's just that's something that's hard coded in the engine that we can't really get around. So if I want to, specifically if I want to affect intensity and other parameters types, I'm going to use a absolute effect. So let's create uh, an effect that we use all the time, especially if you're doing music or doing busking, um, a flyout effect. There are multiple ways to build a flyout effect, and a lot of folks um, will use palettes or presets where they'll have a single down palette and an up palette, or a down and off palette and an up and off palette. And that's certainly an easy way to do it, um, but that is reliant on all of the, the fixtures in your rig being recorded into those palettes. Uh, I, I try to make tools that I can easily deploy on rigs maybe I haven't seen before, um, or I'm just walking into. So I'm going to show you how to make a flyout effect using uh, just stock uh, relative values and an absolute effect. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new effect. And I'm going to create effect 813. And I want this to be an absolute effect. 
First, I want to think through the actions that I want this effect to take. So I know that the first thing I need a flyout to do is I need the lights to turn off and be at their start position. I can set that start to position to be straight down, but maybe I want this effect to fly the fixtures out from wherever they currently are. So uh, let's, let's see how to do that. First thing I'm going to do is I want to set my first parameter. So if I tap in the parameter column here, I get presented with parameter tiles. And I want this first one to be intensity because I want the lights to turn off uh, as the first thing that's happening in this effect. So I'm going to tap on intensity. Next, uh, I want to set uh, what is it going to do? Well, I want it to come to full. So it's going to go to full 100%. Other things I want to do, just like in uh, other effects where we have had overlapping steps, um, I actually want my step time here to be zero because I want this step to ha happen simultaneously with the step that follows it. So I'm going to set the step time to zero and I don't want this to fade. I want the light to just snap on as it does a fly out. So I'm going to give it a time of zero and then I'm going to give it a dwell of four. This dwell of four here is saying I want this fixture to be on for four seconds. Next, for action two, I'm going to set my action to tilt. So now, this intensity step and the tilt step are going to happen simultaneously. I want this to happen in a zero time and a zero dwell, and I want this to be background. So if we read this right now, what it's telling me is simultaneously, the light turns on in its background state. That's what's happening in this first step here. I'm going to add a third step. And I want a third step, please confirm. I want this to be tilt also. And this is where the fly portion of our effect comes in. So tilt is our parameter because it's going to use the parameter directly above it. So a bit of a time saver there. How long do I want this fly to occur? Well, I'm going to have it take three and a half seconds. That's that time, right? So it's going to transition from its background state to wherever it's going in three and a half seconds. How long do I want it to stay at its top once it gets there? Well, I'm going to half a second. Where do I want it to move to? Right now it's in the background state, so it would still be pointing wherever it is. I want it to move relative to wherever it is. So I'm going to enter in a value of at plus minus 100. The reason I'm using a negative value here is because I happen to know that the fixtures in this rig are oriented so that the negative values come towards us, come towards uh, the camera, basically. So that's why I'm using a negative value. If the lights were flipped, I would use a positive value. I'm going to change my step time here to be three and a half seconds, which means that these lights are going to fly out and then they're going to wait for half a second, but this step is going to overlap with the, the next step. So I want to create another action. I'm going to create action four. This is going to be an intensity. And now I want my step time to be three quarters of a second. 0.5. Dwell for a second and a half. So this is where it turns off. So if we were to read this table from start to finish, right? The light is on, pointing down. It tilts up in three and a half seconds. As soon as it finishes tilting up, it's going to fade to zero in half a second, which is where that dwell on that half a second come into play. Finally, I'm going to add one more step. I'm going to add a tilt step. And I want this to take a second and a half. Or I want this, this step time to be a second and a half, I'm sorry. Uh, with a time of zero and a time of zero. And this is going to return it to its background state. So. Now again, if we were to read this, we have a five-step effect. The light turns on, pointing wherever it was currently pointing, pointing down. It turns on, it flies up in three and a half seconds, then it fades off in half a second, and then it returns to whence it came. We're about ready to go into live and test this. But before we do, um, we have one more step we have to do. Because we are using multiple different parameter types in our parameter column, we need to make sure that we add those parameters into our parameter list so that when we apply this effect, the effect knows what 
type of what parameter sets to apply to. So I'm going to tap in my parameters tile here, and I'm going to select intensity and tilt. And now when this applies, this effect will apply to anything that has intensity and tilt values. So I'm going to go into live, I'm going to select all my movers, and I'm going to go ahead and run the effect. And sure enough, we have this nice little flyout. Now, looking at this, oh, it's pretty good. Although I want the, when the fixtures hit the top, I don't want them to stay on at the top. I want them to fade off uh, a little sooner. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to tweak this just a little bit. And in, in this tilt, instead of making the step time three and a half seconds, I'm going to make it step time only three seconds, which is going to overlap the tilt and the intensity a little more. And now you can see as soon as it gets to the top there, it turns off. It's not holding at the top there anymore. What's nice about doing it this way as opposed to using multiple palettes is this will work relative to wherever the lights currently are and on anything that shares these values. So if I come into, if I stop this effect and I take my front light movers here, it'll work here. But it'll also work if I point them at the center of the psych. So using relative values here in an absolute effect allows me to have a very versatile and powerful effect. And I can, of course, speed this up and use all of my other effect tools. If I want this to run faster, I can decrease the cycle time. And this flyout is going to run faster. I can slow it down. And you still have all the grouping and trail tools available to you too, right? So if I put it on a grouping of one, they're all going to fly out together, turn off, reset, fly out together.